I'd like to give you 11 biblical reasons why Christians must avoid Halloween. As a Christian for over 25 years, it disturbs me. It disturbs me greatly to see that many Christians still get involved with this wicked practice of Halloween. And you know, I'm continually shocked and amazed that many Christians, even those that claim to be Bible believing born again, Christians will think nothing of joining in on this wicked practice, even going along with the variants of it, such as harvest festivals or harvest celebrations that many churches disguise it as. How is this possible? How is it that those of you who get involved in this don't see it for what it is evil? If you truly know and love God, then you'll never participate in this wicked holiday ever. I mean, it's not like other heathen practices that are cloaked and veiled in so-called Christian themes like Easter and Christmas. Halloween's right up there, up front and in your face in plain sight. Yet Christians still participate in it. It's shocking. But before we continue, let me ask you, from where do you get your authority? Is it from gossip? TV, the internet, social media, magazines, or maybe even the culture? Or is it from God and his Bible? What's most important is what God thinks. Jesus and his Bible must be our rule, authority, and guide. Nothing else for our Christian life is more important. Now, this study is not about the history and origins of Halloween. You can click on the link and the one in the description for a video we did on that some time ago. Rather, this is a message on Halloween, or as it should be named, Halloween, is a wicked and satanic, pagan, heathen celebration of which I tell you again, Christians, you must have nothing to do with it. I want to give you 11 biblical reasons why Christians must avoid Halloween. I would also have you note that the scriptures that I cite are but a few of the many that are found in God's Word. And then again, it's unbelievable to me. It's absolutely impossible for a Christian to read through God's word and still desire to celebrate this wicked holiday or even its veiled cousins that the church has put on as harvest festivals or harvest celebrations. So let's get to it. Number one, we are to be holy and walk in holiness. The Bible reads in Leviticus 20, verse 7, Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. Romans 6, 12 through 14. Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body, that you should obey in it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. And verse 19 says, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity into iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. Number two, we are to be about peace. Romans 14, 19 says, Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify one another. Number three, it's a work of the flesh. Galatians 5, verses 16 through 23 say, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, that ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye are led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Number four, it's a heathen practice. 
Leviticus 18 verses 24 through 29 tells us, Defile not yourselves in any of these things, for in all these the nations are defiled which I cast out before you, and the land is defiled. Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth with among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled, that the land spew not you out also, when ye defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. And Jeremiah 10, 2 says, Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Number 5. We are to have no fellowship with the devil. 1 Corinthians 10, verses 20 and 21 say this, But I say, that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of the devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. Number six, it's deceptive. Second Corinthians 2.11 says, Lest Satan should get advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And First Peter 5.8 be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Number seven, it involves darkness. First Samuel 2.9 says, He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. Romans 13, verses 12 and 13 the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. And First Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 4 and 5 say, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day, we are not of the night nor of darkness. Number eight, it glorifies death. Exodus chapter 20 verse 13 reads, Thou shalt not kill. Deuteronomy 14 1, Ye are the children of the Lord your God. Ye shall not cut yourselves nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. Psalm 106, verse 28. They joined themselves also unto Baal Peor, and ate the sacrifices of the dead. And Matthew 22, verse 32 reads, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Number 9. It is evil. Genesis chapter 2, verse 17 reads, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And Exodus 23, 2 says, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. We are to hate evil. Proverbs 8, 13 says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy and the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. Romans 12, verse 9, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cling to that which is good. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 22, Abstain from all appearance of evil. Psalms chapter 97, verse 10, Ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints and delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. Number 10, it's full of witchcraft, magic, sorceries, and enchantments. Exodus 22 verse 18 reads, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Leviticus 19, 26, and 31 reads, Ye shall not eat anything with the blood, 
neither shall ye use enchantment, nor observer of times. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 6. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards to go a whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. And Revelation chapter 9, verse 21 reads, Neither repented they of their murderers, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. And number 11, we are to fear the Lord. And brethren, that means that we are to not fear, not to be led into fear as this Halloween and haunted houses and things like that do. We are to fear the Lord only. And this is proven in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 2 and 13. And it reads, That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's sons, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shall swear by his name. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 and 20. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul? Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, him shalt thou serve, and to him shalt thou cleave and swear by his name. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 reads, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. And 1 John chapter 4, verse 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment, and he that feareth is not made perfect in love. So there you have it. I have given you 11 biblical reasons why Christians must avoid Halloween. Do it, brethren. Avoid it. Stay away from it. Don't participate in it. And don't get involved in the fake celebrations that that churches put on avoid it leave it cling to the lord god and you will be blessed thanks for watching